Howdy, howdy, folks. Once again, this is Donnie coming at you with another tutorial in Basic System D. And it has occurred to me that in all of the videos I've done so far, I have neglected to take a look at the structure and the anatomy of a System D service file because this is something that you could use someday because, you know, it's possible that you might end up having to create your own service files at some point. So we will take a look at that in this next series of videos. So when you open up a systemd service file, you will see three sections to it. You will see the unit section, which is the informational section. This contains the description of the service. That's going to be the, the description that shows up when you do a system CTL status command for this service. And it also defines what other services need to start before this one can start, if there are any. Then the next up, we have the service section, which contains the commands and all the command options as well. I forgot to put that in there. And if there are any environmental variables that you need to set to run the service, for example, if you just want to put environmental variables in the command section so that you can use the same service file for other machines which might need different values for the variables, you can do that. You can define those variables in there. And you can also have in the service section a command to gracefully shut down the service. And then finally, we have the install section, which basically just tells the service which target requires or wants this particular service. And typically, this is either going to be your graphical target or your multi-user target. And you can also use the install section to define aliases for that service. So let's say that you're used to running a uh, service by some other name, maybe you can define the alias for it. So let's go ahead here and take a look at our Apache 2 service file. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you too. I forgot to tell you too. We're going to actually look at these different sections in three different videos because the service section is going to get a little bit long. And so just to be able to break up the monotony a bit and keep this one from getting too long, yeah, we'll just do it in three different sections. And so this video, we'll look at the unit section. And you can see there, it's very, very simple. We have a description, which is the Apache HTTP server. So that's what will show up when we do a system CTL status. And then we have the after and this just means that we got to have all these different targets running before we can have the Apache running. So we want to have the network target running, which, yeah, that kind of figures. You know, what good is an Apache web server if you don't have a network? And the remote FS target and the NSS lookup target. And... I actually don't know what those two are. Well, NSS, uh, name switch service lookup. Uh, I'm not sure what the remote FS is. Uh, it doesn't really matter for now. But the point is that we need to have these three things running before we have the Apache web service running. Okay? And really, that's pretty much it for that. Okay, let's also go over here into the libsystemd system directory, and we'll take a look at a couple of other examples. For example, let's go ahead here and open up the ssh.service file. And so here again, we see a description. It is the OpenBSD secure shell server. We also see an after. We want this to be running after the network starts up and after the audit D service starts up. And we also have something different here. We have a condition path exists equals not at C SSH SSHD not to be run. So what it's doing here is looking for the presence 
of this sshd not to be run file in the ssh directory or in the etsy ssh directory i should say and if it is there then the ssh service will not start so what it's looking at when you see that exclamation point there it means that we do not want to see that file and then we can go ahead here and do another example. Let's say dbus.service. And in this one, we have a description, dbus system message bus. And we also have documentation. So we can have a documentation line in these files. And in this case, it's just referring to a man page. But if you create your own custom service files, you can also put in there like, uh, like an HTTP link uh, pointing to some set of documentation out on the web someplace. Doesn't matter, right? And then also we have this requires equals dbus socket. So the dbus message bus requires this dbus socket. We've got to have the dbus socket or else this will not run. And we can look at this. And there's the dbus socket file. And so basically, this is just what is creating that socket when we boot the system. OK, so anyway, you've got several different examples there that we've looked at. So you should have a pretty good handle on the unit section of a system D service file. And if you want to see more information about systemd service files, just do man systemd.service, like so. And you'll bring up the man page, which tells you all about how they're structured. All right. So that's pretty much it for now. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, be sure to hit the like and subscribe because Trust me, folks, it helps me when you do. It helps make these videos spread faster. It helps them turn viral. <laughs> but anyway, seriously, uh, if you have liked it, hit like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. And in the next video, we'll be taking a look at the service section of a systemd service file. That's all for now. Thank you for watching.